what I'm going to talk about today is prior authorizations that everybody loves to do. Um, basically, it's a big pain in the butt, and it's a waste of our time. Um, it really has no patient benefit, and I'll show you a court case that actually uh, delineates that kind of clearly. Um, and ultimately, it only in, involves in helping the insurance company to lower their bottom line. We all get prior authorizations as part of our life, uh, like doing face-to-face -face visits for home health and doing face-to-face -face for hospice. Um, so that's just part of it. But I get tired of meetings when you go to the meetings and they say, well, we just have to let the political system play out. And I used to ask questions. I said, what can I do as a physician, an individual? What can I do? What advice can you give me? And they really couldn't give me anything that I could do. So that's what I like to try to do today. Um, goals here basically is to eliminate prior authorizations, and I can dream, or you can at least uh, reduce them significantly. I also want to introduce a concept and plant the seed that you can build for this activity. How many people have ever billed for a prior authorization? Yeah, one, excellent, two. I started two about a year ago. Um, also, I'm gonna give you some techniques. This, uh, one of the board members here said it was like Saul Linsky. I'm not really going by that playbook, but it's actually the same results. Uh, I want to gum up the works. I wanna make it so unprofitable and such a pain in the butt that they don't wanna deal with Zodiac. I want them to remember my name. Um, and I think I'm actually succeeded. Um, imagine your practices, you always have that one difficult pa patient or difficult family. Imagine, and everybody picturing that person in your mind right now, coming into your office and how they gum up the works. It's just a, a nightmare. That's what I want to be to the insurance companies. Um, and eventually not make it worth their while. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean it. That's, I want to be a big pain in the butt. As I've gotten older, I'm closer to death and birth, and I really get, I take it personally when someone wastes my time. Now, I don't mind being time being wasted a little bit, but when I'm wasted, my time's wasted to profit an organization, especially an insurance company, I got a problem with that. So this is the same place I want to be. Insurance companies. So I have to start out with some definitions real briefly, and I'm going to fly through these slides. It takes about 14 minutes, so I won't waste your time. But basically, an insurance company is a business, and businesses in this country is still, this still the United States, they're designed to make a profit. I have no problem with that. The primary uh, uh, function of an insurance company, if you think life, disability, car, malpractice, is ultimately to accept risk for a fee. And that's great. I mean, I love insurance. I mean, you can't, can't live without it in this country. But the insurance company does not provide medical care, period. They, however, have morphed. All the ins other insurance companies still do basically that. And health insurance has morphed. And now, not only does it share risk, and of course, anybody who signs up for all the big plans knows that you're sharing in the rewards, but actually you're sharing in the risk more than that. But they're also trying to influence medical care indirectly through us. One of the ways is through prior authorizations. However, the insurance companies do agree with me that they're not in medical care, and I'll show you how I know that. The definition of a physician. I use physician, I'm old school, I'm not a provider, I'm a physician, I went to med school. Okay. I'm a for-profit entity. I'm a solo practitioner. I'm a dinosaur. I expect to make a profit. I love what I do, not enough to do it for nothing. Okay. I do provide medical care, whatever the heck that means nowadays, but that's what I do. I also accept the responsibility and the important word, the liability for it. That's part of the job. That's why I make money doing it, and I have no problem with that. So I also change the definition of prior authorization. When I get one, I reframe it and push it back as a different entity back to the insurance companies. They're asking the physician, not a medical clerk, not a medical records person, they're asking a physician to do something. They're asking for an MD or a DO uh, to research and review the patient's chart. Also to integrate that information. That's what I'm an internist. Internists integrate information from all different sources. Then we formulate conclusions to answer their questions. That's a medical consult. That's how I make a living. I don't stick needles in people. I don't cut them open and count their gallstones. I mean, so this is what I do. I use my, my brain. Uh, and I want to get paid for that. Liability, go back to this important phrase. Liability, this is the difference between a, uh, taking responsibility and why you should get paid. If you're liable or responsible for something, you can, get, you can bill and get paid for that. The only exception would be parenting. Parenting, you are responsible and liable, but you pay a lot of money. That's another talk. Insurance companies, uh, that's what I talked to you about. Insurance companies agree with me. They don't provide medical care. If you look on your prior authorizations or anything else from the insurance company, they want you to change a medication to their formulary med, which could be better or worse, who knows. But they specifically say, they say, well, you're the doctor. It's a patient-doctor relationship. We're not doctors, so we understand it. You're ultimately responsible for this decision. Well, that's great. So they tell us what to use, but they're not going to be responsible. I don't want to do that. 
and you shouldn't either. So what do I do? I'm good at operations. I'm, I, my brain isn't big enough and smart enough to do all the politics. I don't have the patience for it. So when I get a prior authorization, and in your packet there's a, a, a copy of what I send back to the companies if you have it. If not, I have a, copy, a few copies up here. I reframe their PA request into a medical consult. I personally ignore all the stuff they say in the letter. I just reframe it and send it back to them as a different entity. And I tell them what I'm going to do. I'm going to research and integrate all the information, come to a conclusion, and send it back to you. I include the cost. I charge $41. I made it a strange number just for fun. Uh, but it is, it, but it's, and actually it is based on my Medicare rates for, I do long-term care, so how many patients I can see in an hour, and I divided it, and it roughly is $41, but still it's a funky number, so anyway. Um, and I, but I do give them a no-cost alternative, and if you have a copy of that in there, uh, the first part of it, I'm going to just show you. It doesn't come real good, but the first part of it, and I also call this a Physician's Council Request for Prior Authorization Information Research and Transmittal. Could I work for the government or what? And, <laughs> And I tell them basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to research it, I'm going to go ahead and send it back to them as soon as they pay me. And the very bottom, I give them an alternative. They say, no, we're not going to use your services, we can use our own clerks, our own medical staff, our own medical directors, and they know what they're looking for better than I do, why don't they go ahead and have the records? They're a covered entity. They have access to the same records I do. What's interesting about this, this piece of paper by itself isn't enough. So this is the fancy, this is the fun part of this presentation. There is legal precedent for charging for PAs. There's a doctor, some of you from Ohio may have heard of him, Gary Gibson, and in 2007 he was, uh, got tired of doing prior authorizations. The number increased and he decided to bill for him. He billed an insurance intermediary. They did not pay him, so he took him to court and sued them. Uh, and what happened was, it's interesting, that the next year in 2008, this is a horrible slide, but anyway, the judge, and you can get this on the internet, I got a copy of it here too if you're interested, but basically it boiled down to three things. The judge uh, decided, uh, ruled in favor of the physician because three things, there was no contractual arrangement with him and the insurance company, so he had no obligation to do anything for the insurance company. Two, and this is, refers back to the previous slide, the prior authorization was only designed to benefit the insurance company. It had no benefit for the patient, no benefit for the physician, only for the insurance company's bottom line. So the judge ruled that the doctor, since he had no ob obligation, and, he, and if the insurance company wanted to use his services, he should bill and should get paid for it. I called this doctor up a couple of weeks ago just to follow up and to get information for my talk. And he said, in fact, that the insurance company did not appeal to the decision, and they paid him $187.50. But it set a legal precedent. So I asked the doctor, I said, well, what was your ultimate goal in doing this? He got a lawyer, he went to trial. He said, well, I wasn't planning that far ahead. I wasn't really planning to become a legal precedent and I didn't want to be on 60 Minutes. As he said that quote, he says, I didn't want to quit my day job to pursue this. But I thought, what a shame. So I figured I'd use this as ammo. So here's what I do. And this is, we're getting down toward the end. This is, this is my Stalinsky procedures. You get a prior authorization by fax. I attach my consult and a copy of the judge's decision. Fax it back to him. It takes 20 seconds, and it takes two seconds on your fax machine, you walk away. So it's not going to take a lot of time. If they send it back, either they ignore it or have a second notice. I take the previous four pages and the new prior authorization, another copy of my consult, another copy of the decision, send it back. I'll have four or five salvos, 30 or 40 pages go back and forth. It doesn't take more than 20 seconds of my time. I keep it by the fax machine. And I don't use uh, their websites. I use snail mail once in a while, but I gotta buy a stamp and I'm kinda cheap. No websites. Humana last week literally sent me a fax. This is our preferred method of dealing with prior authorizations. Here's our website. We want you, doctor, to go ahead, go on the website, register, get a password. So whenever Humana, not somebody else, just Humana, sends you a prior authorization, you drop what you're doing, go to the computer, go onto the website, put your password in, and do the prior authorization. So I sent them back a copy of my consult. This is my preferred method of doing prior authorizations. If you have one, let me know. Uh, I also do in my thing, I don't want to be a total pain, and I want to show them I am cooperating. I reaffirm my commitment to excellence in patient care. That's what they send me. I echo all this stuff back to them. I tell them how I'm looking forward. I'm thrilled to be partnering with them. Um, that's in my forum, too. And I also remind them in a serious note that I'm not refusing to cooperate to do the preauthorization. I'd be more than happy to do it as soon as they pay. So I'm not being uncooperative. And that's important that you give them an out. Goals, basically, I'm not trying to make money on PAs. 
I do want to force them to stop. Just like when you come to your office and you get a prior authorization from a UHC, human, it's all different. You have to stop what you're doing. Your systems have to be put on hold. What do they want us to do? What do I have to fill out? Where's the record? And you have to scramble, and it's too much time. I want them, them to stop and have their systems messed up. Granted, my faxes won't come back in paper. It'll probably be in the computer screen, but somebody's got to go through 30 or 40 pages to find out what the heck Zodiac wants. Then they have to ask their supervisor, I've never seen this before, what do you think we should do? They send us a bill. Should we call billing? I don't know. There's a legal document here. Should we call legal? That's what I want them to do. And they do do that, okay? Uh, and that's, that's the way to do it. Ultimately, the result, I have had some of, I've never gotten paid, first of all. That's fine. However, I've had some prior authorizations come back approved. I never did anything. Some, some went away and the medicine was still being paid for. Other ones I have no idea. Okay? However, I get very few prior authorizations anymore. I don't know why, but I'm, I'm serious. I, I get maybe a handful here and there. And finally, this is the last statement. Imagine Monday morning, if all the prior authorizations sent out in the United States, if every single one of them was sent back with a bill. Wow, wouldn't that be awesome? Thank you for your time.